In this video, I'm going to show you how to use macros with your Sonic Pad. Macros are basically a group of multiple commands that you can initiate with one button press. Clipper, the firmware that the Sonic Pad uses to control your 3D printer, uses macros in a number of different situations where it wants more than one thing to happen at a time. One example that we're going to run through in this video is to use a macro to replace your start and ng code. What we're going to do is replace all of the star and ng code with a single line of text for each. This line of text will initiate a macro that we're going to create. The reasons why we might want to do this in this particular case are simple. By pointing our slicer to a macro, it means that we can change anything within that macro without having to re-slice the model. However, there are many other situations where you might want to initiate more than one process with a single button press. This might include loading and unloading filament, creating a customized bed loading process, or replicating Marlin G-code commands like the M600 filament change process. If you've been following my Sonic Pad series from the very beginning, then you will have already used a macro. When setting up bespoke time-lapse options, we added a post-processing script, which initiated the time-lapse take frame macro every time the printer started a new layer. This particular macro takes up to 60 lines of code, but in our slicer, we only need to type one. As you can see, macros are a great way to simplify complex processes. In comparison, star and ng code are very simple processes, which makes them a great place to learn. First, let's have a look at where our macros are located. You may find that you already have some macros to use on your Sonic Pad. If you can't use macros yet, then you'll need to enable the option in your settings. The best and easiest way to edit macros is through a web browser. If you don't know how to connect to your Sonic Pad through a web browser, then check out this video where I show you how. On my N3S1 Pro, I have multiple macros set up. If you look in your printer's config file, you'll probably already find a few macros in there. If you plan to add a lot of macros, then it would probably be a good idea to create a separate macro config file and then add this line seen here in your printer config file. This tells Clipper to go and read the macro config file and do what it says. However, as we're only going to add two simple macros, we'll just do them here in the printer config file. As with any time you plan to change your printer config file, save a backup of it to your computer. This way, if you accidentally change something incorrectly, you can just delete it and copy back in your working config file. To find the information we want for our start G-code macro, we can search in the other files section for the sample macros file. In here, you'll find a number of macro examples and right at the top, a start print and end print section. All we need to do is copy all of the text and then paste it into our printer config file. Try and put it with any other macros to keep things neat and then make sure that there's a line between each section. So what are we actually telling the printer to do with this start and end G code? The first couple of lines of code look into the G code for the file you're about to print to find what bed and extruder temperature you're going to want to use. From now on, it can just reference bed temp and extruder temp without having to set definitive values. Any line with a hash at the beginning will be ignored, so we just use these four comments to tell us what the other lines mean. So the hash start bed heating line just tells us what the next line means. We then have an M140 set bed temperature command that references the bed temperature that was just found out. So at this stage, the bed will start to heat up to the temperature that we want for printing. We then have a G90 line, which as we can see, means to use absolute coordinates. We then have a line that would enable you to set a Z offset if you wanted to, but I'll leave this at zero. As with Marlin, we then have a G28 command, which will home all axes. Then we get to a couple of lines for moving the Z axis. First, it will move it to five millimeters from the bed and then down to 0.15 millimeters from the bed. The M190 line says to wait until the bed temperature is reached. And then when it is, we have a line that tells the extruder to heat. Once all of this has been completed, our print would start. The NG code is even simpler. It uses M140, M104 and M106 to zero the bed temperature, extruder temperature and the fan speed. The nozzle is then moved away from the print while the filament is retracted a little as the nozzle is raised. All of the steppers are then turned off and your print is complete. This is fine to leave as it is, but there are a couple of edits I like to make to mine. In my current start G code, which I'll be replacing, I have a line to take a new bed mesh and I also like to print a purge line first. What I can therefore do is copy and paste the parts that I want into the macro. After the G28 line, I'm adding a bed mesh calibrate, which tells Clipper to take a new bed mesh at this stage. Then once the extruder has been told to heat and it has reached its temperature, I'm copying in the lines from my start G code that describe all of the movements for the purge line. This start G code macro will now do all the things I want it to do. 
all I'm adding in the ng code is one line before the steppers are turned off, which moves the bed all the way to the front so that it makes it easier to remove my completed prints. Once you're done editing your config file, click save and restart, and then, once Clipper is restarted, you'll have two shiny new macros in your macro section. If you want to test your new macros, then click on the down arrow next to the start print macro and see if you want to change the temperature, and then click the button. Without being attached to a print file, it can't find the bed and extruder temperatures that you want, so it has some defaults to use in their place. When the macro is selected, Clipper will run through all of the commands contained within it. The end print macro will throw an error unless the extruder is hot enough to extrude filament. So if you want to test this, then make sure your extruder is hot enough first. Now that we've created and tested our macros, we need to tell Clipper to actually use them at the start and end of a print. To do this, we're going to simply replace all of our start G code in our slicer with the text start underscore print with everything in capitals. Likewise, our ng code gets replaced with end underscore print. Slice a model and test your new start and end print macros. Now, if you want to change anything about how your print starts or ends, you can just change the macro within your config file rather than having to re-slice your model every time. As I said, these are very simple macros and they can get a lot more complicated. One of the most effective ways to use macros is to copy in macros created by others. There are quite a few that can be found online and I'll link to some in the description. Now we know what macros do and how to create them, we can move on to the next video in the SonicPad series. Click here to go to that video now. I'll see you there.